Also this past month, you have heard a lot, uh, you may have heard a lot about North Carolina receiving an F in USA Today as it, re as it pertains to our making sure that our students, I mean our children, our teachers are, uh, are screened appropriately and that we have the best <coughs> teachers in our schools as it relates to not having teachers who uh, ha are convicted of, of criminal activity. And I just wanted to bring to your attention, and you've received a copy of it, uh, a report that I asked a task force to develop in 2010 about how we could assure that we have uh, licensing screening in place. And that group made some recommendations about how we could improve the process. And some of those recommendations have been implemented through our new electronic licensing systems. However, I, thought, I think it's very important that you as a board know about the state legislation as it uh, relates to background checks. And so I've asked uh, Ms. Laura Crumpler to go through the state statutes as it deals with uh, criminal history checks. Please know that since uh, 1995, approximately 1995, we have had uh, approximately 800 people who have been disciplined, uh, who may have had a revoked, or who may have been denied a license to teach in North Carolina. So with that, I'll ask Ms. Crumpler to go briefly over the legislation uh, related to criminal background checks. And you do have the law as a part of my attachment. So Ms. Crumpler. Um, yes, and let me just say a few things in, in introduction here. Um, as you will see, this particular statute applies to local boards of education um, with regard to criminal background checks. There is no statute that authorizes the State Board of Education you know, or the department to access the fingerprint database. Uh, it takes statutory authority in order for a state or local agency to access what is maintained essentially by the SBI um, in conjunction with the FBI. Um, local boards have had this power since 1995, and this is the statute that gives them that power. Um, the, the one thing I do want to point out is notwithstanding the report from the USA Today and, and any follow-up reports and, and things that have been done, um, this board has actually in the department have done a really excellent job with um, making sure that the teachers that enter the profession have been adequately checked. There are various other ways to do background checks besides fingerprints. Um, and one of the strongest things this board ever did was adopt the mandatory reporting requirement in, I believe it was 1993, um, which requires superintendents and other um, members of leadership and administration at local boards to report to us uh, wrongdoing by teachers so that we can you know, adequately stay on top of those kinds of issues with their, their local teachers. This particular statute was adopted or passed in 1995, I think part of the Excellent Schools Act that um, was passed around that time. Um, and it does give the local boards of education the authority to access fingerprint, the fingerprint database. In fact, it requires local boards of education to have a policy that determines who, which of their employees and general contractors must be checked for background information in terms of the criminal database. Um, if they so choose to access the fingerprint database, then the Department of Public Safety, which is where the SBI is now maintained or, 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 or held, um, the, the SBI, the Department of Public Safety, does carry out those fingerprint checks on behalf of the local boards. Um, there is a cost associated, and it's around $50, I think, if you're going to access local and, I mean, statewide and federal fingerprint um, checks. Um, and the statute is clear that the local board cannot make the teacher, cannot require the employee to pay that cost. Um, it is very important in the next slide that the local board of education, once it receives this background check, not only does it have the, re the, re uh, the authority and the responsibility to review it for its own purposes, it must provide the state board of education with that same check. So even though we do not at the 
present time have the authority via statute to access these, this fingerprint background database. When the local board finds out the information it finds out, it must pass it along to us. Um, and so we do get access to that information. Um, it is privileged. It is not public record. Um, and so when we receive that information, it goes directly to the legal department here to determine whether or not there is additional action that we need to take with regard to the revocation or suspension of a particular license or even the denial if that is the case. Um, as you probably know, the superintendent has established an ethics committee, um, a teacher ethics committee within the department that consists of outside um, people, ex outside individuals. They're usually HR directors or superintendents, some are teachers. Um, and they come together once a month to review teacher applications to make sure that the teachers have the requisite character and moral fitness, and in this case would be reviewing criminal background checks to make sure that they are not licensed inappropriately. Is that? Uh, thank you, Ms. Crumpler. Are there any questions for her? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to. Um, we have people moving into our state all the time. and. Uh, I'm not sure that fingerprint check uh, is sufficient uh, because they may have lost their license in another state or something like that. How can a local school district or the department, uh, do we have access to national databases and how easily can they be checked to try to prevent somebody uh, getting a teaching position that should not be in our classrooms? Um, the, we, uh, we belong to a, an organization called NASDAQ. I'm not sure exactly what the letters stand for. Um, they maintain a national database of all teachers throughout the country who have been had their licenses denied, suspended, revoked, or even a reprimand issued. And we have access to that information at the state level. I do not believe the local school systems have, have access, but we are in constant conversation with local boards, both HR directors and their board attorneys um, around teachers. Um, today with the internet and the information that is constantly shared, um, we, we do a pretty good job of staying on top of even teachers who are moving in and out of the state. Uh, I, I wonder if uh, Superintendent Shock Shotwell has any perspective he'd like to share with us? Well, I mean, I've served on the committee with Laura and Katie, and, uh, you know, that's, that, it, it's, a, that's a real uh, important uh, job. And it seemed like, you know, when originally, whenever June asked me to serve on that years ago, it was we were supposed to be once a quarter. But because of things coming through, it, it really is almost a monthly uh, responsibility. Uh, it, it's a hard thing because, you know, we also do uh, background checks and things, and, and you know the more that you try to find out, the more it costs. And like you know, we have a, a set amount where when teachers apply, we do the background check. We won't let them go into the classroom until we get that background check back in. And and it's supposed to tap into the FBI database and everything to give us a nationwide um, background check. And for the most part, I, I say it's probably 99% effective you know there's always going to be that one exception that kind of gets through there but so far we've not encountered that one percent uh Ms. Crumpler, is there anything that we uh, i think we're going to discuss this more uh, at our work session is there anything this board can do or that we should ask the general assembly to do you don't have to answer that now but i mean <laughs> I, I mean if there's something that we need to ask the General Assembly to do or we should do, uh, we need to make that a priority. I would agree, and I think the task force that, that issued its report has a number of good rec recommendations in there that should be at some point considered by the board. Well, well uh, Mr. Hill, we need to consider it our work for our work session. All right. Without any other questions, uh, that concludes my report and